Hey guys, so in this vid final video in my little trilogy here about running things at scale and infrastructure and hosted solutions, I'm going to talk to you about serverless, which is a just a, it's an umbrella term for a concept that is very powerful and it's very useful. Uh, there are some drawbacks, but I want to share this solution with you as well because I've already I've had I've made two videos about you know Amazon and Azure Cloud and Google Cloud and then also just basic host hosted solutions such as Heroku for example. And I thought I'll do the do uh, do one for serverless as well because that's the final really concept in hosted solutions or in the cloud if you will so what is serverless well serverless is the idea that you don't have a server there ergo the name is this true no it's not really true what's actually happening is that you are renting servers from some provider the two my two favorite ones for serverless is amazon's with amazon with their lambda functions and you have uh, firebase which i use personally so the idea is basically that in traditional application architecture, what you do is that you host everything yourself. You build all the applications. You basically just pay for different computers or environments that you can spin up and into a cluster of services that talk to each other. Like you have a database cluster, you have a database instance, and you have an application instance, and maybe a caching instance for all the different types of needs that you may have. In serverless, you don't do that. What you do is that you deploy single functions instead. You basically have, and that's what I do. Like I write my my personal startup. I run in on Firebase, and all that is is just JavaScript functions, and then I have access to basically functions or libraries that are going to work inside of uh, inside of Firebase. So I can access databases, I can sp save things on to disk like files and static stuff like that. And then everything else is basically like, like an express server. You have a request and you have a response and, and that's it. And that's what's so beautiful about this. You don't have to think about managing a server. You don't have to think about managing a database. You don't have to think about anything besides providing logic and value to your application because all the other stuff around it, logging and all that stuff, is already taken care of for you. You can just focus on developing your idea. And that is very, very powerful in the beginning. And apart from that, one of the biggest benefits is that it's pay per request. So the free tiers will last you a very long time because you shouldn't forget that it's going to cost you money to run things at scale. And that's, you know, you know, that's how these platform as a service providers get their money. So what's beautiful about this is when you're just starting out, you don't really have any investors or like any real users, you can actually prototype very quickly with serverless solutions because it, you know, even if you sit there and just like code and code and code and then you try out requests to different endpoints and you deploy new functions and so forth, you don't, you have a quota that is free for you. So you can just keep on playing around every month and you don't have a time period. Amazon, for example, if you just run instances, have a free tier to a point. I don't know if this has changed now, but usually you have a year for, for free and then you kind of have to start paying for it. This is not the case for serverless for the most part. You simply as long as you're not exceeding your free qu tier quota, everything is fine. And that's very powerful. So I would argue that if you, are, if you have a mobile app idea or if you have some really small thing you just want to try out, you should use ser something. Serverless is a really good fit for this. And if you want to do a, like a traditional web application, a traditional web page thing, I suggest you take a look at, you know, Basically, just yeah, Heroku is a really good fit. I would, I, I'll have to admit. So, if if we have kind of talked now, we, I think we have covered like the bare bone like benefits of of this. Let's talk about what's not so good. So, this is really this is kind of Firebase specific, but what I like Firebase is really really great you it has a lot of things that it's going for it the one thing that i kind of lack in it is that the database is very limited in firebase because it's designed to do a very specific type of thing and in order you can do a lot of things with it but you have to do a little bit of trickery and so forth so maybe you know if if you want to get started really quickly then yeah sure you can take a look at 
at Firebase if you don't have like needs for a very specific type of database. Let's say that you have that, then I would look into Amazon's, so like basically Amazon's uh, Lambda functions because you have a little bit of a broader range in terms of databases and so forth. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. I, I would say that as a, a good rule of thumb is that you can, I, and I, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that serverless is, you know, it, that it won't scale or anything like that. And, you know, I don't think that serverless is just for like small toy projects. There are some serious companies out there who actually run everything serverless. There's a really, some really cool tech talks about that actual thing. I think that one I watched, they claimed to have, I think, two or like 20 million like monthly users or something like that. And they're just running everything serverless. So don't think, serverless is, think of it this way. Serverless is a lightweight version of what, you know, Firebase is running in Google Cloud. Like, like they have an integration to Google Cloud. So you can actually, you know, you are in the cloud, if you will. There's no, like there's, um, the idea of serverless is not that you're not in the cloud. It's more about, how you run things in the cloud. It's less maintenance for you. And the cost of less maintenance is that you get less power. So that's a, that's a way off. If you're just starting out, it's more beneficial for you to be able to move quickly with less freedom and power than it is to have a lot of power and a lot of freedom. And that changes over time. So the bigger your company gets, the more advanced things you will need. And that's when you start transitioning from serverless over to like the cloud, like regular cloud applications and containers and so forth. So that's my tip. Uh, take a look at serverless. It's a really good place to start. If you're just one, if you, you know, if you want to make a mobile app or something like that, if you're just making a regular web, web page, serverless works there too. But I would probably look at something as like Heroku maybe. Hopefully this was useful to you.